Hi guys, welcome to GIF Music. My name's Alex, and I'm in the studio with Matt Jackson from Modal. How are you doing? Matt's the designer of the Modal Craft Synth. So in this video, we're going to talk you through the presets and how to start making your own sounds. So before we start looking at the individual parameters, the important thing is how does it sound? So Matt, if you can talk me through some of the presets and the sounds that we can get out of the synth. Absolutely. Uh, so it comes with 16 uh, presets loaded on there. Okay. Uh, so I'll show you how we can access those. So it's all about this little button here. And you hold it down until the LED starts spinning. That puts us into preset mode. And then you tap it again to cycle through the presets. And that's in binary as well, so it's a, a binary lighting structure. That's right, it does display the number of the preset in binary, but you absolutely don't need to know right. binary, you just need to remember the shape. So once I've selected one, um, such as that one, I then hold it until the LED spin, let go, and that's that preset loaded. And that's loaded now. So we can listen to that. Um, let's go for another one. Again, hold the button down. Choose preset, load. So you can save over any of those presets with your own patches, um, but you can also restore the original ones as well, right? Uh, so you, you don't lose them. And when we talk about the app later, you'll see we can um, save many more on the app as well. So they're, they're quite harmonically rich sounds that you can get from this. But if I was wanting to start creating a sound from scratch, would you want to show me how we'd go about doing that? Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the first preset, which we get. Call it preset zero because it's got none of the lights on. Load that up. That'll give us just a pure sine wave, which is kind of a nice uh, bass sound to start with. So I can run through each of the... Uh, parameters one by one, start to build up a sound okay. um, and explain what each one does. So, moving on from there, carrying on through the controls, we've got a spread control here. Now, we talked about there being two oscillators. Yep. Uh, what spread does is it splits those two into four each and spreads them out on the frequency spectrum, meaning that you get a really rich tone that's made up of um, more oscillators, essentially eight oscillators rather than two which sounds like this. Which gives it a really lush, rich sound. And it spreads out more and more up to the halfway point. And past the halfway point, those eight oscillators uh, snap to predefined chords. Well, okay. So we'll have a little listen to that. So that allows you to, in effect, play chords with a monosynth. That's great. Yeah. So that's the spread control. Uh, let's have a look at the filter next. So our two filter controls are here, our filter resonance and frequency cutoff. So via the front panel here, we can set a uh, low pass resonant filter, which means we filter out the high frequencies of treble, just leaving the low. Uh, through the app, we can actually um, access a variable state filter, which allows us to use band pass and high pass filtering for those that know all about that as well. Uh, so it's a uh, it's quite a powerful filter actually. So it's quite it, 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 uh, it's going to allow you to create quite a lot of different sounds. Then that's right, yeah. So we'll have a listen to it. Uh, here's our uh, low pass cutoff. <laughs> And if we add some resonance to that. And a little bit more. So those are our basic filter controls. And lastly, on page one, we've got our um, LFO um, rate and depth controls. So if I turn up the depth of our LFO, our low frequency oscillator, and then you'll hear the sound die out and come back on a very low very rate. Slow. And it's affecting the amp, so the overall volume of the sound. I'll speed that up a bit. So that's a, a free 
uh, frequency adjustment up to about 32 hertz, which is about halfway. And that allows you to have quite a lot of control over the speed of that. But past halfway, it snaps to divisions of the note that you're playing. Right. Sounds a bit like that. Which actually, when you're modulating the amplitude, which we are at the moment, in those kind of frequency ranges, that's AM, AM synthesis. So, and also, as we'll look at in a minute, we've got more destinations like um, frequency, which will allow us to do FM synthesis. So again, the LFO is really powerful. It allows you to modulate the sound in a way that gives you a lot of harmonics and uh, a huge range of possibilities with the synth engine. So that's all on page one. We've covered the first page okay. of controls. <laughs> Uh, page one is denoted by there being one LED. And if you wonder why it's flashing, that's because it's showing you what the LFO is up to. So right. if, if I put it down to a slow rate again, and we see it. Yeah, so it's pulsing in time with the speed of the LFO then. Exactly, yeah, that just helps you keep track of what, you, what you're doing, how you're building your sound. Now if I click the button, which is the same button we use for the presets, rather than holding it down, we just give it a quick click. We now have two LEDs on which shows us that we're on page two. And now rather than, for example, our first control being our wave shape selection, it's now distort. So it's the, the second label on each control. So we'll run through those controls, uh, starting with distortion. So you'll hear uh, that it's a really warm distortion, it's actually an overdrive, a wave shaping overdrive, right. rather than a bit crusher or something like that, which will really allow you to get some nice harmonics and warm sounds and yeah, also all those really crunchy, harsh sounds as well if you want. Then we've got our FM control. So this again gives us more harmonic control. Uh, FM amount here will modulate oscillator one from oscillator two, modulate the frequency of oscillator one from oscillator two. So if we turn that up, let's go back to page one and see. Make this a bit more obvious. Okay, you have to hear that now. It's just adding more harmonics to the sound. That's right, yeah. And depending on the frequency difference the detune of oscillator 2 to oscillator 1, and your spread mode, whatever else you're doing, it can create all sorts of interesting effects. So that's our FM. Let's move down to our fine control here. So that's fine detune. And that, where we had quite a coarse detune for oscillator 2 before, which remember snapped to minor thirds, major thirds, fifths. Uh, this is a much finer control that just allows us to have just to uh, introduce some beating, and again, it can make the sound sound a little richer as well. Next to that, uh, we've got our delay. So there's three controls here, our delay amount, our delay time, and our, our delay feedback. So I'll turn up the amount, and we'll start to hear it. And if I shorten the delay time, slowly make it longer there. And our feedback is essentially how long that goes on for, how much of it feeds back into itself each time. So from very little feedback to quite a lot, it takes longer to die out. So with that, I mean, it's, it's difficult to show you quite the range of sounds you can achieve with that. If you set a really sh short delay time, you can have lots of nice metallic sounds, uh, resonating metallic sounds. Um, you can make kind of nice evolving reverberant sounds uh, or just really wacky sounds as well. It's quite a, a powerful um, effect to have in there. And lastly, on page two, back to our LFO. Last time we saw rate and depth for the LFO. On page two, we have shape and destination. So if I play our sound, we were modulating the uh, amplitude 
there, which we can hear. If I change the wave shape. So we've got sine, triangle, sawtooth, and square on there. But if you look at the label around the pot, there's actually uh, an inverted version of each. So that allows you to do things like um, uh, on beat and off beat modulations, that sort of thing, which is good for dubstep or wobbly bass or whatever it is you want to do. So those are our LFO shapes. Finally, we've got our LFO destinations. So that is what is the LFO modulating. And again, at the moment, you can hear it's the volume, the overall volume, the amplitude of the sound. If I move up from that, we've got frequency. <laughs> which sounds pretty wacky. Yep. As I talked about before, because the rate goes quite high, we can do some interesting frequency modulation with that. So if I go back onto page one, turn up the rate to demonstrate that. <laughs> so you get some really crazy sounds out of that. Uh, back onto page two. So that's our frequency. Next one is filter cut. that up a bit on page one. There you go. You can adjust the resonance or the level that it modulates up to. Uh, moving on from filter cut we've got FM so this modulates the amount of FM that we had. So when we used this FM amount control earlier, which we did, if we introduce that on the LFO, probably want to slow that down a bit to hear it. You hear that modulating the FM amount there. We then have oscillator mix. which is the same as basically modulating this uh, control on page one. And finally, we have pulse width modulation. So our uh, on oscillator one, where we could set the tone to that um, pulse width mode, if we choose to modulate that on the LFO, uh, yeah, again, you can create all sorts of thick, lush, varying sounds. We need some really advanced LFO that you get in this box. I mean, just listen to the sort of sounds that you can get out of it. It's quite incredible. That, that's all coming from this little synth kit. You don't need to plug it into a computer or use the iPad to create these sounds that we've created today. Literally, this is everything being created from the front panel. So it does have an app as well, and the app does give you some advanced features. Do you want to tell me a little bit about how the app works? Sure. So. While the craft synth can be used standalone, the app adds a huge number of possibilities to the functionality of craft synth. So where basically you've got access to all of the parameters that the craft synth has. Uh, so both pages are visible, both envelopes are visible and you can control all those parameters. We've also got um, performance modes, so you can play keys and sequence. We can load and save patches and so on. So First and foremost, it acts as an editor, a really right, easy okay. to access editor. Um, so, for example, so if you used to kind of to hold a note while I control the filter, we'll hear the app in action. Okay. So that shows you how you can modulate parameters via the app. As I say, we've got full control over all of the parameters across both pages, so I can uh, change wave shapes. I've got full ADSR control over both the uh, amp envelope and the filter envelope. Um, I can also uh, recall patches from here. So again, if you could press a note for me. That's our current patch. If I cycle through, and again. So. In terms of performance as well, we've got um, keys and sequencer 
that you can use to quickly swap between different sounds and, and play in different ways. Moving on from the basic functions, if you had multiple crafts uh, connected to the app, then not only could you use the app to create a uh, multi-voice performance, if you like, multi-track performance, so you could also use the app and the synths collectively as a poly, because you've got multiple synths to play each note. So you said you can have these running polyphonically through the app. So how many of these can you link together? So you can have up to 16 of them running through the app at the same time. But actually, Craft Synth is the start of a family of products. So there'll be a whole range of different devices that we can connect and we'll have interoperability in various exciting ways. Cool. Can you tell me anything else about them? Uh, not at the moment. No, you'll just have to watch this space. Cool, exciting times. So Modal, known for making really high-end synths. What's the idea behind making a synth which is as cheap as this one? Well, me personally, I've been working in music technology, making controllers and synths for nearly 10 years. And the idea behind Craft was to make something really, really functional with amazing sound and a huge number of features for the most accessible price. And actually, um, what we come up with is something that uh, has a lot more to it than meets the eye. So in terms of its uh, hackability and playability, for example, things like adding your own uh, knob caps or 3D printed case, there's so much you can do with it. So I think it's, it's really a more interesting uh, product for having stripped all that stuff back. I mean, it's the great thing about the price of it is it's something that brings synthesis to everybody. It doesn't matter how old you are or what your bank balance is. This is a really affordable synth, and it is a real synth. And that's one of the things that I've noticed about it from using it over the last couple of weeks. And from what you guys have been doing, you've, you've got a great range where you make the pro-end synths, and you've, you've, you've come up with this synth, which is really, really interesting, and I'm sure that you'll come up with a full range of them. Um, so what's, what's next then? You're still continuing on with the, with the high-end pro synths? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, Modal share my passion for this sort of thing, and we've got lots of ideas planned for this, but also in the new year for the other range and other new exciting products to come, absolutely. Okay, well, let's have a look at it. I mean, the thing with this is it really is a fun synth, but not only that, it is a real synth. So you can make a full track with it. And in later videos, we're going to make a full multi-track track just using this synth so you can see how versatile it is. Yeah, absolutely. As you say, it is a proper synth. You can achieve all the same sounds that you would expect any proper synth to make, and it has uh, all the features that you might expect and want. And using the app or your door, you can have multiple ones to create a, a whole multi-track piece um, or create a polysynth. And as we talked about community-wise, things like Raspberry Pi and Arduino and 3D printing, you can add so much value to it yourself. You know, we're really excited to see what ideas other people come up with as well. The idea that you can actually customise this and it becomes your synth, your craft. I really like the idea of that. And I think that's something that people are really going to embrace. They're really going to get interested in finding out what they can do and what they can add to it. And I can't wait to see that. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you, Matt, for your help today. No problem. If you want to see more about how to make the synth, please check out the video we posted earlier. Hopefully, we'll have you in for making some more videos. Absolutely. Maybe see another craft synth. Maybe so. And if you want to see more information, just head over to the Gear for Music website. Thank you very much for watching.